We are live. Hello again, and welcome to episode 140 of SDGC for Thursday, March 14th. If you're not aware, Super Deformed Gamescast meets right here each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we discuss the latest gaming headlines with a wide variety of panel members and guests. We also do a whole bunch of other stuff as time allows, like a separate show about movies and television, community game streaming, and a mental health support show. If you've been along for the ride so far, welcome home. And if not, hey, feel free to stick around and maybe throw us a follow. Every single podcast is archived the next day on our YouTube channel for those who like to watch. And you can find us on all major podcast services for those who like to listen. And as Eddie, as everybody in chat can see, we are welcoming an old friend back to SDGC. Justin is here. Oh, <laughs> yes. I've been, I've been gone for two weeks and it, it's felt like an eternity. I'm very happy to be back. Although actually, technically, I could I should be saying that to Zach because Zach. I, I have been, also been gone for two weeks. Yeah, it's hard for a homeless wizard to find Internet. It really is. Thank you so much for that, Steven Spawn, by the way. That was I, I, oh, I, I homeless that wizard. Man. Is that a Steven Spawn thing? That's a Steven Spawn joint right there. He called me that. And now that's a thing, I guess. <laughs> Every one of us is, has a wizard adjective. It's fine. I just. I just realized I, I've heard them calling you that for weeks, and I did not. You didn't have the context. I didn't put together that's... where it came from. <laughs> I that's, just yeah. That's a that, that's a Stephen Spawn joint right there. But yeah. no, uh, we have an old friend. Uh, we have an old friend back in the podcast. Uh, our buddy Woot. Oh, you guys Yay. know him as the hashtag and is doing some fucking Yay. kick ass podcast work. Yeah, man. I I hope so. Yeah, it's been good. I, I come I'm coming off a great episode today that I recorded today with the Christy Pride. It's gonna go up on Monday. I'm looking forward to sharing it with everybody. The last time I was here, you didn't even have a beard yet, John. So what the hell? I, it's been a long. It's, it's come and gone and come and gone. Yeah. It's okay. been a long time. The beard is can, sticking around, by the way. You know, can I just say something before hey. before you join the call today? John revealed to us that the right way to pronounce your name is Woot. No, that's or, not even right. It's, it's, God damn it. John, see, John gave us the wrong. John is lying. Oh. It's a double lie. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love to respect you and, and pronounce your name properly. No, but... man. It, like, I'm Canadian, so a lot of people say Woot. It's actually, it's Wout because it's a Dutch name. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, that's what I was thinking. Damn it. Okay. Damn God. it. Damn John, it. You're John convinced us that we had been pronouncing your name wrong for years yeah, because we just fine. went by with what he said. Yeah, you should never trust John. That's just lesson number one. <laughs> oh, oh, God damn I it. love playing all you fools. It's so fucking good. Damn it, Wood. It's 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 awesome. So um, there's there's a lot to talk about tonight. We've got some pretty cool announcements tonight. One announcement I'll make at the middle of the show when we get a nice big crowd, and the other announcement I'll make at the end. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to stick around for the end of the show because we got a we got a real big announcement to make, uh, and uh, I'm really excited to tell you guys all about it. But you got to stick around. Uh, we have a couple big ones actually. So what's that? We have a couple big announcements actually. We do have a couple big announcements. I'm retiring. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. starts now. Zach is actually <laughs> giving up video games Bye. forever. He's done. He's yeah. Zach chasing is the wizard life. He yeah. is. He's, he's uh, Zach is like the 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 sorcerer supreme. It's a life of academia. Yeah. A life of yep. He is. So oh, we're going to we're going to kick things off here. Uh, um, Justin has a pretty cool, funny little uh, this. So this this happened, I guess, right before we went live. Um, this uh, is something this that wasn't. Happened, this actually happened uh, Tuesday. Um, oh, was it Tuesday? I thought it, it, like, was, it was the Tuesday. First so, OK, so for context, um, uh, there's a website called TrueAchievements.com that tracks like uh, listings of Xbox achievements and games and stuff. Um, it's where a lot of the leaked, you know, achievement lists and stuff come from. Because I, th I think it's like part, like in the Xbox API where it extracts everything. So a lot of times we get early, you know, achievement leaks and stuff from from that site. So this game popped up that no one had heard of uh, called One Leaves, and um, it was from a developer uh, people weren't familiar with, and it was clear from uh, you know the achievements that uh, that it was some kind of a horror game, um, and so people started getting um, you know kind of excited last week when this uh, listing appeared, thinking it might be like a PT like um, experience, um, and uh, people thought it was going to be announced on the Inside Xbox show um, this week. It was not. <laughs> announced there but it did pop up on the xbox live and windows 10 store on tuesday um and it was a free download so again people kind of made that association with uh pt and got really excited for it 
So um, people downloaded it and they play they played it and it's like five minutes long uh walking through fleshy hallways and such and at the end it is revealed that the entire thing is an anti-smoking anti-vaping ad sponsored by the u.s government <laughs> Fuck yeah. uh, you know? the title one leaves is basically if you're the one of like it was like it's like a stat that only one person can survive like so a so smoking here, addiction so out here's of my four. Question. Here's so my question. Four people that are trapped in the maze and you have to be the one that gets out. US okay, government so, going after the vape nation. I don't know right, if they so, know what they're up against. What are the odds and so what are the odds that those fleshy hallways are actually your fucking lungs? Oh, oh almost like, guaranteed. certainly. Guaranteed. Uh one of the achievements is you have to go through it like 20 times. And somebody put together that it's because there's 20 cigarettes in a pack. <laughs> That's yes. the fucking best and worst thing yes. I've ever heard in my life. That is, that is, I would love to know how much money the U.S. government actually spent on this. I mean, it's a five minute long game from a oh, very dude, unknown. The... Oh, no, no, no. The way so this cares so the... $12 million, right? The way <laughs> this fucking government wastes money, dude. I guarantee you millions went into this shit. <laughs> That is what a beautiful fucking troll that is. Like, like imagine downloading this and thinking like, oh man, I'm getting like a, a really sweet PT vibe from this. I love my horror games. This is fantastic. And like the entire and like, it, like I don't even fucking smoke. So it, it's it's <laughs> like it, it's fucking lost on me. It's lost on me. Is this is this specifically on Xbox? Is this just an Xbox? Yes, Live thing? I think it's just on Xbox Live and the Windows 10 Store. Microsoft right and, and the U.S. government trying actually, to tag team take I, on the vape I, you know, I yeah, I was gonna say I think Phil Spencer uh, is actually anti-vape, so we need to uh, you know. Oh, Phil <laughs> vapes. Accordingly. Phil Phil absolutely vapes. Yeah. Like, one <laughs> like, of those yeah. ones that looks like a, a a fucking phone like battery bank. <laughs> there's actually so it there's actually a guy who vapes in my office right in his John. We are not it no, is, we are not getting into. Fine. No, fine. No, 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 your vape no, anecdote. No, 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 it's fine. No, I'll John, stop. I need to hear every detail about this guy. I'll st- no, I'll st- I'll stop for you. No, no, no. When no, was he no. born? Zach, he vapes Zach. in his office. I think we can we can picture everything about this person. So just terraform the environment around him. Just you can. I'm sure you can picture his haircut and the way his beard is styled and and everything well, about this guy. Well, now you're being judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> like Zach. a young Guy Fieri, right? Like... Zach, why are you? Zach, why are you taking this? personally why are you because i i am a low i'm a low-key vapor no um (laughs) so listen so listen people who like the dwindling audience members who are still watching uh we actually have real topics tonight uh i think the first of which is halo one they're adding they're one they're adding reach to the master chief collection but also the bigger news is that's coming to pc on steam but but zach hold on do we want to reveal what our final topic is which is not about video games Oh, you want to tease the final topic? You want to tease the final topic? Uh, we, we, might be having, we might be having a King of the Hill style last sandwich standing, last fry standing, uh, best fast food restaurant. I can't wait for this. This is the we real, this is, this is the only Y'all, reason. It's going to get to be a great discussion wait, by the end because wait, I just blasted rest? this Boilermaker all at once. <laughs> Hold so. on. Is this best fast food overall or is this best no, burger i i think that we're gonna no. do two burger. things i think i think we have time we'll do two things at the very least we'll do best burger okay if we have time we'll also do best fry because i think yes. they're two different things and i think those crowns belong yes, to different those, are, people. those are very different you're yes. all you're, you're very you guys aren't even ready for my fucking steak fry shit i'm gonna, but, I'm gonna uh, shell God, steak fry so hard but, but first God, we need to talk about uh, are too high. we need to we need to talk about the tall green man and i'm not talking about the hulk I'm talking about the Master Chief. Does anybody does I'm anybody want to talk about Green the Giant. Master Chief collection? So, so I'll say this. Um I have only ever played Halo 3. Um I played the campaign co-op with a buddy of mine who owned it. And that's that's the only exposure to Halo I've ever had. Um Same. you know, I, I never owned an original Xbox because statistically speaking, you didn't. Um I had I think five three sixties. Um so like you know, I was frustrated by the time that was over with, and I never jumped onto the Xbox One. So, like, the Halo franchise is this really prestigious franchise that I've never really had much opportunity to really get into. Um, 
especially because people seem to really be into like the narrative of these games. Uh, and obviously missing the first two makes that kind of hard for me. Um, since it doesn't seem like it's one of those things where you're expected, it didn't feel like you could just pick it up and start with three and be like, oh, I'm having a good time. Um, I didn't understand shit. So I'm very excited to have the opportunity to pick these games up and play them. Um, I hope it breathes new life into um, the franchise because it's felt kind of like gamers have not been, had a lot of reason to be excited for Halo for a while. Uh, and I think a newer expanded audience helps. Um, if it comes with continued fixes to the Master Chief Collection on Xbox One, which I know that's been ongoing. Um, that's uh, just more of a good thing. I, I don't see a downside to this. Can Are I? More... No, just, Zach, just, just, yeah. just really quick, in case somebody has been living under a rock, before we keep going, I feel like I should clarify what the Master Chief Collection is. Oh, yes. Uh, so, the, so the Master Chief Collection came out in 2014 on the Xbox One. It included Halo 1 through 4. The single player, the co-op and multiplayer uh, components were all there and put all together. It was an entirely botched launch where the only thing that worked was the campaign. The multiplayer was incredibly hit or miss. Um, it turns out if you take basically 10 years of gaming and 10 years of, of internet infrastructure and you shove them all into one single package, things don't always play along, especially when they have different developers. Uh, making those games and making those remasters. Uh, so now, after letting that, that game kind of uh, uh, rest dormant after Halo 5 came out, uh, 343 Industries, the, the uh, people who are helming Halo, are bringing it to PC, and they're also updating the game, and they're adding Halo Reach. So this will be every Halo game uh, in the mainline series except for Halo 5 and coming to PC with multiplayer and, and the single player. Um, but I, I just wanted to clarify that because, you know, maybe maybe you're a young player. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you've been under a rock. So maybe that's maybe that's important context. Uh, woot, wout. Wout. Yeah. So here, here's the thing. I, I see a lot of excitement for this game, and I think it's great if, if something comes back that you love. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to buy it, but I'm, I'm, I'm very curious how many people are actually going to play it again. I think sure. it's going to be a collector's edition yeah. that people are going to buy because there's already so much that people want to play. This year is packed. Are you really going to yeah. go through all that again, maybe in preparation for uh halo whatever it is they're they're kind of yeah. with um, but i think it's cool to have but like man I, just the thought of having to go through three games again in in addition to everything else we're gonna play um i don't know it's we'll six see. isn't it it's one yeah, two it's three four games. reach and odst oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. more yeah there's more yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like those games totally aren't very long right like I, I, don't well, know. I, like it. Uh, I mean like i, I mean if know. i remember correctly the halo 3's campaign was like 12 hours i mean Maybe 12. Yeah. it was yeah, you know they're not they're not like they're not like an evening one and done like a Call of Duty, but they're not super short either. Right. So and I, like I think like, I think oh go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say you, you know kind of bouncing off what Wout said, you know, like I I get wanting to go back and like I get nostalgia, right? Like I I play Final Fantasy 6 every year, I play Chrono Trigger every year, I play Super Metroid every year. Uh, I play these games every year. There are more games that I uh, that I I play. Um uh you know from way back in the day that i love i play them all the time so i i get the whole nostalgia thing but i, I do think that it surprises me that there's so much excitement over this when, like so so this is somebody like i don't play my xbox hardly ever i don't really do a lot of pc gaming i'm not a huge halo guy are there more people playing master chief collection multiplayer than there are like halo 5 like no. like like well i mean okay, i don't know so, 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 so but, like what's the big you know but, like i don't get what i think the, what okay. it basically boils so, down to is the pc crowd is excited to play through the campaigns of of the, i mean that's what it feels like because the pc the, crowd is not there's not a ton of crossover necessarily with the console crowd well and i i think another huge component of this is that a lot of people the xbox one or i'm sorry the xbox 360 was huge last generation a lot of people played that and then these games, they, a lot of people went to PS4 or went to PC at the start of the generation. A lot of people didn't go to Xbox One for obvious reasons at the start. And so people are looking at this as an opportunity to come back to this franchise that came out 10 years ago that they had a lot of fond memories with when they were in middle school, high school, college. Um, I think it's, I mean, I think it's a nostalgia trip. And I think based on what Watt was saying, I think he's absolutely right. If this comes out in the fall, and they're, they're so the way they're rolling it out on PC is that they're going to do uh, each game, starting with Reach, and they're going to go one, two, three, and four um release on pc all of them on xbox one at the same time um it will be a release window right because if, if they release it in the fall it's dead but if it's you know if it's the summer months and it's a slow time you know maybe maybe they find an audience we'll, we'll see one thing i do want to mention is um like 
the Halo and PC thing is a very, there's a very, very long, long history there. And I kind of want to mention that because that's kind of why this this thing has exploded and why 343 Industries had to stop asking people to send them pizzas because they had gotten so many pizzas they couldn't work anymore um, <laughs> because people were so happy about this announcement. Um, so basically, it, uh, what happened was is Halo was initially announced as a Mac-only RTS. Wait, um, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, th- this story goes back a long yeah. ways, John. That was that was initially what Halo was. It was a Mac only RTS. That's why Halo Wars exists. I didn't fucking know that. Holy shit. Yep. Yes. See, so, see Jobs presents it to the world, right? Yes. Or, um, wow. and Holy then fucking shit. What did Microsoft? I wow. Microsoft bought it. Um, and it became an FPS, and it became Halo Combat Evolved. Um, alongside the release of the first Xbox and. The original Halo also came to PC and was very popular on on PC. And it was something that people were really excited about because, um, you know, they didn't expect to be able to play the game because it was supposed to be the launch of a Mac gaming initiative that didn't um, that didn't ever happen. happen. Yeah. And so, um, you know, Halo 1 had a really big fan base on PC. And then Halo 2 came along and it was locked to the games for Windows Live Store. And which, locked on Windows Vista. Yeah, at a time locked on Windows Vista. When and, XP was still the predominant platform and Vista, well, Vista never became popular. Most people yeah, skipped it entirely. Um, so Halo 2, a lot of people weren't able to play it or they tried to play it and it was a bad port. Um, and so that really bummed a lot of people out. And then for years and years, they've been waiting on Halo 3 multiplayer um to release on PC or Halo 3 just in general um and it never happened and Microsoft has been saying oh we're committed to PC we're committed to PC for the past few years and then you know still nothing with Halo so like there's a long long history people have been waiting a long time for like a good Halo on PC release yeah well, um so- and I think that also speaks volumes about why they went with Steam and stuff too because there was the whole games for windows live thing back with Halo 2 I think that's why this part of the reason why this is getting released on Steam um, as well, just to like make sure that they address every complaint that people have had with Halo on PC over the years. So, so like, like I get that people are excited about Master Chief Collection and Halo on PC, and that's great. I think the bigger, I think the bigger topic here, I think the bigger, you know, the the broader conversation is basically Xbox morphing into uh, a service uh, as opposed yeah. to a platform yeah. which is something that has been telegraphed and and rumored for for years and now we're actually seeing it happen and i tweeted out i tweeted out the other day and i want to i want to kick this over to i want to kick this over to wow first um i tweeted out the other day that i was like look honestly why even buy an xbox anymore mm-hmm. and, and a few people were like you know ah oh, john and i'm like look no 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 you're, you're taking this as a negative and and that's not how i mean it i i think i think I think Microsoft is betting on the right horse. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I, I think this is a smart move for them um, because yeah. it's it's going to offer something that Nintendo and Sony don't. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I don't know, man. What do you think? Yeah, it, it depends. Like, I don't have the, the financials uh, on how much money they actually make of the hardware. Like, if there's still a net profit there, then I I can see them. It's basically going Steam Box with this whole thing. Uh, if if the next generation is going to be that, right? It's going to be a more of a, a multi-platform generation, but like at the same time, they're buying studios left and right. Um, it would be a loss of investment if you're gonna lock it on your own hardware. If you can spread it over the 15 billion PCs that are out there as well, so that makes complete sense. But if you're talking about the Xbox brand as a console, yeah, I think it does devalue that a little bit. If if your exclusives, what we're always uh, crying about, how important it is, um, are no longer you know, locked into a piece of plastic that you have to put on your TV. But I think there's always space for them to do something. You know they're going to announce two consoles uh, in June. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. Like, it, it's hard to tell. Like, we're sitting here at Five Dudes and against the boardroom full of extremely intelligent business people have probably gone through this several, several hey. times. Hey, five extremely talented podcasters and good looking okay. as and well. Extremely good looking. Extremely good looking. Um, so I don't know, but uh, it, it's interesting. Like you said, like if you have a good PC, is there a reason 
to buy uh, Xbox plastic? I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't. Derek, what do you think, man? So, and part of this is is I'm confused because I've heard now a couple different takes on the Microsoft has two different consoles coming. When I originally heard uh, the first rumblings about them having two different consoles, what I had heard was they have like a high-end, you know, super powerful traditional console coming, and then they have their lower-end, lower price model, which is intended to work in tandem with their, like, cloud game streaming service. Are you talking about the discless Xbox? The... No, not the, not the Xbox One S all okay, digital. So the idea was are, that... These are all different things. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I had heard was that the, the cheaper version of the next two was going to take some of the computing power off of the cloud service so that a lot of it was still being done locally. Like, basically the bullshit that you heard about Crackdown where, like, the cloud was going to do all this extra computation for the console to make it more powerful. All, that... Yeah but actual yeah. um okay. and and the console wholly built around that now zach before the show you were saying that it was more of a traditional something closer to the power of the xbox one x my my understanding is that so so two things uh one i think that microsoft absolutely i, I think microsoft is doing two tactics here one is they don't want to repeat the beginning of this generation where Xbox was the less powerful, more expensive box. I think they're going to have the most expensive box, but I also think that they're going to hedge on it being the most powerful. And I think they're going to offer an alternative that will be to the average consumer who will pick it up. And it might leverage some power of the cloud. I don't really know, but I would anticipate it having a similar power level to the current Xbox One X. Yeah, um, I, probably more. Yeah. Justin, do you, do you have another opinion on that? Yeah, from, from what I heard, it's similar to Zach. Uh, there has been updates. Again, these are all rumors and leaks. Um, these aren't, you know, but these are rumors and leaks from people that really specialize in Microsoft and Windows stuff that have very good contacts within Microsoft. Good track um, records. Uh, yeah, it's very good track records, um, especially with a lot of the Xbox stuff recently. Um, so, yeah, basically, it seems like the w basically... Um, it's a, I think it's actually a pretty smart strategy. It'll be interesting to see how it um, pans out. Because, like, Xbox, I think, is going to, from now on, just be talking about choice and kind of um, talking about, hey, hey, you can play um, your Xbox games, you know, on... You, you can buy this cheaper Xbox, which will let you play all the same games. Um, they just won't look as nice. Um, or you can buy, you know, the high-end one, because... Um, Xbox has kind of made, I think that's part of the reason why there was so much backlash against the power profile of the Xbox One is because for the past couple generations, like power and multi-platform games have been kind of one of the big reasons that, you know, people were attracted to Xbox. So that option's still going to be on the table. Um, they're going to let you stream your games. Uh, they're going to let you purchase games normally. There's also going to be Game Pass. Like, I think Xbox is going to be really hammering home uh the choice element so and i me... wouldn't even be surprised to see them you know starting to you know port some games no, obviously not their big heavy hitters and not right at launch but like putting some of their games on other platforms um at this point real quick real quick justin shout out to our boy brandon in the chat he's taking a break tonight brandon come back to us next week yeah um I want to kick this over to uh, I want to kick this over to Zach. Zach, you are you are the biggest baddest Xbox boy on this podcast. You are overstating and, it. And <laughs> and I like so given this future right like like I don't think any I don't think anybody here will disagree that Xbox as a console is not going away. Like that's that that you know your Xbox you you know the successor yeah. to the, to, yeah, to yeah. the one or whatever they call it that that's going to be here. Xbox games are going to be available to play, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a platform, but it's also going to be a box where you can play your games. Zach, as somebody who is uh, both integrated into the console and the PC realm, like, like you, you hopping back, you hop back and forth. Where do you see yourself falling? Like next generation, do you see yourself grabbing an <laughs> Xbox console or do you say, fuck it, I can play pretty much everything I need to on my PC and I, I can still get my Chivos. I can still use my my you know my Xbox Elite whatever controller Chivos. like those. Yeah, Chivos, man. So you never like heard that term, Chivos. Okay, so here's the thing, right? It, uh, it's a complicated thing. Um, so so Microsoft's approach is like a couple. There's a couple things going on, right? Like I think just quickly, I want to touch on it. The idea behind two consoles is not only between hedging between being the most affordable and being the most powerful. It's also 
trying to predict where the market will go in terms of U.S. infrastructure and internet, where Xbox has its biggest market share in the U.S. They don't know how much we are going to see the 5G and also internet improvements across the country. So they're going to they're hedging their bets between will streaming work across the country and will people be willing to buy a big console. But the other thing that you're touching on is complicated because we now know that Microsoft, if Sony would let them, would publish their games on a Sony platform if Sony would say yes. We know that they're they're probably going to do it with Switch eventually too. Uh, so as somebody who has who has started with the Xbox 360 and then is but pretty pretty big um, in the Xbox One ecosystem, it's hard because part of me is like, well, I should just stick with with PC because all my Xbox games are either going to be there or on Sony or on Switch next gen. But part of me wonders how much that walled garden will come down. Um, you know, Microsoft said that part of their caveat is we want to see these we want to see Xbox Live on other platforms. Yeah, and I can't see Sony saying, yeah, we'll let you put Xbox Live on here. Um, so it, it's just, I think Microsoft is putting their consumers in a weird spot where we've got more choice, but we're also kind of spinning the chamber in terms of our access, right? Like I, I love Halo and I love Gears of War. And if I knew I was gonna be able to play that on Sony next gen, I just go there because I'd save myself the money. Um, but we don't know how much those walled gardens are going to come down to, to meet Microsoft's interests. Yeah. I uh, mean, there, there was a statement yesterday from Sean Layden, which, actually made me more optimistic about that because if, if i hadn't read this let me see if i can find the quote real quick because if i hadn't read this i would be right there with you and, um again and again and, i still think this is going to be a very slow process yeah and, and um, while while you look for that quote i'm just gonna throw it really quick so sam friend of the show sam uh who just did a secular Go watch that if you want, or yeah. listen if you can. Good, he, good mentioned right that, he mentioned that uh google is testing project stream which we'll get to later um and, and it worked wonders on somebody's slow internet, which is true. But another thing you need to mention about internet is that most people have data caps. I have a one terabyte data cap, and you hit Same. that very, very fast in the United States. Um, and I don't know how much streaming will pull down, but like it, it is more than can you do it. It is how, for how long. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's something to watch, especially when you have people like Ajit Pai uh, in um, – in the uh, FCC. FCC, yeah, who who are you know doing things to give more power to to people like Comcast and less power to consumers. So we'll we'll see. Justin, did you find that quote? Yes, I did. Um, okay, it's kind of long, so I'm just going to kind of skim over parts of it. Um, but this is Sean Layden, who is president of Sony Worldwide Studios. Um, it says, I don't want to put too fine a point on this because it might upset some of the people I work with, which I think is a very interesting part of this quote as well. But he said, and then he continues, we're looking at a kind of post console world where you can have quality gaming experiences across a variety of technologies. Sure, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro provide what, of course, we think is the best gaming experience. But the other consoles out there, be it the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One X, or tablets or phones, there are great experiences across all of these. What we need to do is recognize all of that. We're not little gaming ghettos that are not federated or aligned at all. We're all part of the same gaming community. We just come at it through different doorways. I think the future will be an extension of that metaphor. Your platform is not your hideaway. It's just your doorway to all these others, all these other gamer folk. Um, which, that seems like a very big shift from a lot of their other statements. Yeah, um, we'll fucking see. Yeah, we? we'll, yeah, because we'll, yeah, I still remember. This is I the saw... same company that flat out blames developers for not including or, or um, turning on crossplay when the developers later will come out and completely contradict that themselves. Well, uh, look plus, at plus the Derek, group I, devs. I, st I still remember Jim Ryan wanting to protect all the children uh from the evils from of cosplay. Minecraft. so yeah. so you know yeah. although 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 you know granted you know uh, anyway i won't i won't go in there. the long but again, term but, uh, like, they're protecting the children from notch <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly um exactly. but i mean like obviously i don't think we're going to see xbox live on playstation anytime soon no How no however i, don't, I do I, think like that quote does give me hope for at least for like cross play because i like pl playing games with a lot of people that are on that that play a lot of games on xbox um and I prefer, like, I don't have an Xbox because I can't afford that many platforms. Um, like, it'd be really nice if I could just play with them and stuff. So I think we're going to see a lot of movement on this. And it'll be really interesting to see, to talk about, I think, towards the end of next gen uh, and kind of reflect on where we are now versus where we're going to be. So um, real quick, uh, I wanted to drop the first of our multiple announcements uh, tonight. Uh, we got we got one announcement here and then another one at the end of the show that I highly recommend you stick around for. Uh, so the first one is that tonight we are going to we are announcing for the first time 
the uh, SDGC Patreon. And uh, yes. what this entails. Finally. But yeah, it's, yeah, we're, we're doing a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a few things that everybody needs to know. One, uh, right off the bat, we, uh, as of right now, we don't feel comfortable gating any of our content behind a paywall. Uh, so any, so any support you give us will be purely out of the goodness of your heart. There's no um, reward tiers or anything. There's no reward tiers. Point. Just, just give whatever you want. If you want, uh, nobody feels, but you know, if you don't, you're not going to miss out on anything. Um, we will be as transparent as you need us to be with how the funds are used. And I'll go ahead and tell you that everything would, would be used for travel and, uh, getting new equipment for, uh, you know, for all of us, uh, so we can deliver you with bigger, better looking and better sounding content. And so we can keep doing things like, here. yeah, in two weeks, we're going to be in, uh, in Boston for PAX East and every single one of us that's going is paying completely out of pocket, out to, of pocket. to travel, to, to stay there for, for everything. Um, so, you know, it, it'll be going towards things like that to enable us to do more of those kinds of events. Um, I can't imagine that we'll be pulling so much of that Patreon money that we'll actually be like banking it. But, yeah. um, if, if we ever get to that point again, we'll have that conversation with you guys. We will have that conversation about reward tiers. Um, anything that changes anything, we'll talk about it. it we yeah. just, we, we just wanted to reinforce to everybody that, uh, right now we're not getting anything behind content and we're not going to sit here. We're not going to pressure you to support us or, or do anything like that. Um, you know, and it, yeah, we just want everybody, we wanted to explain to everybody before we launch it, what's going on, because we just want to be as transparent as possible with everybody, especially everybody who's stuck around with us for years. Zach, go ahead. Yeah. And I was going to say, you know, we, we've already kind of iterated on this, um, you know, tonight, but the one thing about SCGC is that we've always maintained a pretty tight knit and it's growing, but, but a tight knit audience. Um, and I think that the big thing we want to emphasize is that, um, even if you've been with us for literal years, one, we appreciate you, we see you, but also like if, if you don't, you know what I mean? Like, do not feel like this is something you need to do to support us because you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yep. There's no pressure here. We don't, we don't, we don't, you know what nothing, I mean? There, nothing, nothing gated. about our content is going to be um changing with the launch of this except we might have some higher quality we might be able to get to some more events and have some better mics some better which cameras is, which is fucking, production values you um, would think you would this think is not that going to affect anybody's access like if pe people that talk to us on twitter we're not going to like be ignoring you um, yeah. well i'm going to ignore wow i'm going to ignore wow <laughs> okay, well yeah, I would, I'm gonna, but, um, fucking shit out of wow you yeah. but um whether you choose to back or not, um, nothing's really going to be changing with how we run the show. Except, yeah. except we are all going to look even fucking handsomer than we do now, which is fucking crazy to me. How do you right? fucking do that, though? Look at these, look at these five, look at these five grow? handsome lads yeah. here. Is this look just going to get bigger? Oh, I don't know how you do that. Well, hey, I it's think, actually... I think you're all being way too apologetic about your Patreon, first of all, because it's awesome. Uh, and <laughs> if so you're sweet. listening, I'm not part we of this. We just want people to, to be comfortable with it. Wow, that's No, all. I'm, I'm going to shill hard for you guys. Running a show like this, you're five guys, and this is just who are on tonight. It's a bunch of people putting a lot of time and effort into creating this content and week after week after week. You're like, what, episode 100 and... 40. 40. 40. 40. We've been doing this for like, three and a half years, almost four years. That's right. You have software that you have to work with. It's, it's expensive. None of you should be losing money on creating great content for a great audience. So if you get like five bucks in, that's, that's already putting you forward on like not having a loss on creating stuff for other people so don't be that apologetic like it's nice that you don't gate that's great nobody should gate their content but yeah man get get that bread you should <laughs> yeah that's right what wow said games. fucking pay us that's right from now that's on, right from now yeah from now on whenever we want money we just bring well on and he's just our hype man <laughs> that's right. hey man i'm gonna go through your patreon tonight and don't even yeah, boy. wow Wow has officially joined SDGC. Uh, his title is Collection Plate. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to work for a collection agency. So well, There we go. Wow. Like, oh, dude, you're going to be our strong arm guy. Yeah. To send you right. people's houses, right. you know? No, it's great, guys. Um, absolutely great. Ne next step. Next step for, uh, for, the, yeah. for yeah. everyone. Big things. Yeah. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, we got a big year coming up with SDGC. And I got another really cool announcement. If you guys stick around to the end of the show, you'll know what it is. Uh, I've been wanting to... Uh, drop this one on you on you all for a long time but but before we do that zach what's our next topic uh our next topic i believe is talking a little bit about google's upcoming Google. announcement both both that they're they're having a gaming event and some of the people they've been bringing in uh well have you been following this i kind of want to throw it to you yeah 
so so they they hired uh, Jade Raymond as a, as a VP. I, I don't know a VP of what. They, everybody like, of Google. Look like she's like, the VP. She seems Google. like the VP of Google. Period. Yeah. I, I, I think that. I think she can't announce what yeah, she's VP I think of she's until AVP. after this conference. Because Google probably is like eighty VPs. If she's the VP yeah. of Google, I don't know what they're doing. Because uh, that is kind of a big deal. Um, he... If she gets to see my Google search, she's awesome. vice president of one third of the world, basically. <laughs> like... Yeah, I think VP of Google is a bit much, but uh, probably the gaming like branch at there. That's the big rumor, right, for GDC. Uh, I don't know, man. I have feelings about this. The, a Google console scares the shit out of me, to be honest. Yeah. Because Google is not a, a product um, manufacturer, right? It is a data seller of all of us. Like that is their business model. They give everything away for free and they sell what we give them. So for them to put a piece of plastic in my house, there has got to be something behind there. They're not going to go like we're going to go into gaming. There is a model behind that. And I'm very curious to see how that's going to work. So, yeah. So here, here's here's my take on this whole thing, right? Like, like right now, we know next to nothing except for uh, the only thing we've seen is the mock-up of that hideous-looking controller. <laughs> Which, well, by the way, that wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just a mock-up. So, well, no, I know it's just a mock-up, but it also looks like a fucking edged weapon. Okay, let's yeah. just let's just fucking it's be honest bad, about yeah. it. I it's, have Sasquatch hands, and it still looks like those thumbsticks are like a mile it also too looks far like a, inward. The thumbstick uh, also looks like a face, Derek, like with the eyes, and then the little like the microphone <laughs> thing in the middle. And once you see it, you can't ever unsee it. Damn it! Also. But- and, ahead, and no, also, Zach. I just want to quickly say, and come on, symmetrical sticks. Listen, if you're coming, it, if you're coming for the king, you best not miss. You best not miss asymmetrical sticks, or also, Symmet- you know, you know everyone knows that the best good, way to do it is symmetrical sticks symmetrical at the top. Sticks are real good. No, okay. yeah, no, okay. no. Nintendo Pro Control, Wii U Pro Controller style. I'm just saying, man. So I'll, I'll set the sticks, but go on. I'm sorry. So no, no, don't apologize. I was just gonna say real quick, Zach, that um. I I have said this numerous times and I'll reiterate it. Look, I we don't know the like the the nitty gritty about the Google console, and I'm sure we'll find out either before E3 or at E3. But I have long said that this industry cannot support more than three big consoles. Um, you know, like and and I don't I like. Here's the thing. I don't think that the addition of a fourth would put the industry in jeopardy or anything. I just don't think that I don't I just don't think there's room for four. Well, you gotta also, knock somebody out to come in. I don't I don't yes. think it's actually really weird that this time around, Xbox, like Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo have all done pretty well for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, at least as of the launch of the Switch. And obviously Microsoft has kind of recovered from their initial stumbles, are doing quite a bit better now on the gaming side than when Xbox One launched, but this is not how it has worked ever since it's been these three. Um, you know, Sony was the runaway winner uh, when it was the Xbox and the GameCube and the PlayStation 2, and both the GameCube and the original Xbox suffered. And then we had the PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii, and the Wii was the clear winner out the gate. The PS3 really, really suffered for a long time and eventually made its way back up, and by the end, everything was at a pretty good point for everybody, but it took a long time time and a lot of losses on sony's part hardware wise um and then this time around but you know after that it was like okay we had the wii u completely flopped the xbox one had a incredibly rough start and it was only nintendo bringing out a completely new piece of hardware and um the xbox one making some real backtracks in terms of um you know the services they were offering and, and their approach uh to being a first party uh company that that got us to the point where all three can end the fiscal year saying yes we had a good year um so if if another big player actually jumps into the ring and wants to make it a four-way oh somebody's got go sounds hot sounds kind of hot though if you put a you know like that i mean one thing i one thing i do want to say is like a couple people have uh like uh specifically zuj from um Post no, Juga, Juga X. Yeah, he's fucking Z huge. I know that's no, it's not Juga, how you Juga Leong. It's a reference. No, damn it! No, no, no. Hold on. You know, you know. Real quick, we're gonna fucking straighten this out right now. Technically, it's Juga EX. Okay. Yeah. But here's a here's a deal. Here's a deal. It's fucking Z huge. Okay. It's fucking Z huge. I can't. Z, with y'all. I can't. Dan okay. got his fucking start. He, his first ever podcast was this podcast, and we started, SDGC started the whole Z-Huge thing. So really, it's our fucking fault. Anyway, please continue. Okay. <laughs> well, he posted, um, you know, that 
uh, in agreement with somebody that it was not going to be a traditional console. Um, I didn't think it would be like, I, yeah. So still, um, I'm very curious as to if it's just going to be a streaming service or if it's something else, because their teases make it seem like it's going to be something more than, uh, their project stream stuff that they have tested. Um, they it's did be do, handheld. They did do a beta test of um, it, it's Project Stream for Google. Google, right? Yeah, That's yeah. So Assassin's yeah. Creed Odyssey was like their big push. Dude. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, so that was the big one. So we know um, Ubisoft is probably going to be supporting whatever platform this is. Uh, uh, hold on. Wait, um, wait, wait. Real quick. Can somebody ban Agent Strange, please? With that bullshit no. in the in the fucking chat. If somebody could ban him, make him a mod. Make really him a mod. Really fucking appreciate that. Do not make this man a mod. <laughs> Jesus Make strange mods. Christ. So, 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 yeah. So, Justin, Justin, you're absolutely what right. What the so fuck is that all us... about? Hey, so, yes. John. Sorry. John, I'm sorry. I'm John. sorry. Focus. Okay. All right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So, so, as Justin was saying, Odyssey was a test. It shows Ubisoft has interest. Go on, Justin. Do you have more? Um. Yes. And, um. You know, Jade Raymond, um, being involved, like she clearly has a lot of connections within the gaming industry that would be very useful for getting, um major major publishers and developers on board with this we already have confirmation that amy hennig is going to be at this thing we have confirmation that id is going to be at this Shit. presentation that is happening at gdc really um crystal yes. dynamics too right crystal or dynamics you... yes okay. um so there's a lot of big people from the gaming industry that are going to be at this i'm very curious as to see what shape this is going to take because it doesn't sound like they're Re releasing a traditional box um but with all this stuff it sounds like it's got to be way more than just streaming to me um yeah um, well and, uh, and i just i kind of just you know wout said some good things about about you know google's business model um and we saw um, really good things wait, well, no, yeah. but I mean, I good, think. Good, 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 good in the points. sense of that there are things worth yeah. to think about. So, so what, what do you think their model is going to be? Do you think they're going to be like any other storefront where they're going to sell me a $60 title and I maybe I'll stream it from home? No, I think uh, I, if if they're going traditional model, traditional console with six full price games, I, I think they're pretty much dead in the water. Uh, okay. I think it has to be a little bit more than that, like either uh, mm -hmm. a, a whole service platform where you either buy in uh, through games with the licensing fee or whatever they're gonna do. But here's what what I'm thinking is gonna be. Remember Metal Gear Solid One, where in the fight with um, what's the, what's his face. The, Psychomantis? the psychic, Psychomantis. Psychomantis, yeah. Yeah, where, where he reads your memory card and like, you oh, like he... Konami soccer. Imagine sick. that with Google, but for everything you've ever done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you spent seven hours on Pornhub in the last I week. I love like... Pachinko, don't you? Yeah, there is no way that they're, they're not going to pull something out of your, your habits. They're going to profit off You've been downloading heavily, unlicensed but... APKs. Exactly. But you know what the thing is? With us, people who enjoy games, we're going to be like, the first game, like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then we're like, oh, $20 games. Oh, well. And then we're just going to fucking go along with it with everything that Google does, as always. I just want to... So I just want to point out well, real quick that now I've got this image in my head of my Google console telling me, John, I see you've played Final Fantasy VI more than any man <laughs> could ever really do. Like... <laughs> So you um, played Final Fantasy VI eight times in the last yeah. two years, in calling you week. a doctor. Like, so, <laughs> look at how creepy Google ads are, where you like Google yeah. ones because you think there's a scroll in your walls and you get thermal heated camera ads. <laughs> like oh, so it doesn't so even need angry. that. Somebody will have a conversation near me and the ads will pop up on my phone later that day. So, yeah. I'm actually... Zach, is it, Zach, let me drop this prediction real quick, and then I'm going to kick it over to you. Okay. There's something yeah. else that I want. I think bears mentioning. If you look at the like, I again, I know the controllers are mock up, but it came from somewhere, right? Like, I'm sure it's based in. I'm sure there's some there's some truth to it. It's based if, on a patent. Yeah, exactly. If you look at the, if you look at the controller itself, right in the middle, there is a a microphone button, right? So I'm thinking that this is going to have some kind of functionality with Google Home. I, I think that's. Sure. I think I think the oh, writing's yeah, on the wall definitely. for that. Why one. not? Um, you know, so which, but but again, like I, I feel like there's a danger there because I mean, Google Home, Google Homes are notorious for being fucking you know easily accessible for hacking, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it wasn't just that. Literally last month, Google had to apologize because they were selling they were selling smart home devices where they didn't list on the product that it features a microphone and it does, and they released an apology about it because they said, oh, we forgot to put it on the on the mentions. Of, well, that's a little yeah. silly because obviously you know that it has a microphone, you have to talk to it. Like, 
What, yeah, what but, but I mean, I mean, but like, what's so frustrating about this, right? And it goes into what Wild is saying is, it's like, Google, we know your fucking track record. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, so, I guess what I mean, and listen, all these questions will be answered. Um, but next week. You know, when, when, yes, exactly, next week. But when we it's, see, it's, when is it again? Is it Tuesday or Thursday? It's Tuesday, next week? I think. Tuesday. It's the twentieth. It's the twentieth, right? Either. I mean, news next regardless, week, regardless, regardless, next week we will have something more concrete to say about it. But right now, I would like to understand, and I'm sure we'll see it next week. Um, is when we see people like Jade Raymond signing on to be there, and other developers signing on to be there. Is it because they see promise in a platform or is Google just throwing a shitload of money their way? Which either way, hustle recognize hustle, like whatever. But I mean, I'm fascinated to see. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, but I think that you don't get Jade Raymond to join if you are trying to say, yeah, we're trying to sell people $10, you know, I mean, um, yeah. video games. Right? So, I so mean, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm what fascinated, if it's all, but I, I have What if it's concerns. Google Glass based? What if it's based off Google Glass? What about that? <laughs> what if this is the A? What if this is the augmented reality future we've been dreaming of? Like, what if, yeah. you know, like, and, or somebody in chat, I think it was, uh, who said this? Um, uh, Yosemite Blam in chat said, what if the controller is the console? That's an interesting concept. I mean, if it was a streaming box, it could just be like a little HDMI thing that you plug in like a Roku. Yeah. <laughs> like That's never um, going to take off. It's, we're yes. not going to do another VG v- or whatever. I, it's, I'm, re- I'm really curious just to see what shape yeah. this takes because I yeah. think, one, guaranteed it'll be a subscription service mm-hmm. and streaming will be a major component of it. What I want to know is if Google is going to be saying, hey, you can play any of these games in our library or if there will be a way of purchasing games and if there's going to be any way of playing them natively on anything obviously the best model for them would be all games are free and every 10 minutes you have to watch a 30 second ad right that's the best model yes. yeah i could yeah. actually yeah. fucking see that happen no i no, could actually no no no, no not patent, that not patent. not that egregious obviously but but I feel like I feel like that would actually that's actually a pricing tier I can see Google doing like watch an pay, ad pay, to open Final Fantasy VI. Pay the yeah, yeah it, it, pay the fucking premium and get your get you know get all your games ad free. But there's something else that bears mentioning. Yosemite Blam yeah. in chat said again the patent for the controller says it can recognize and connect to multiple devices. Um, so I don't know I don't know what that means, but it, it definitely sounds phone right. It's hard, yeah. I mean it's hard to predict. It's hard to predict. My my um, but. Do zero controller can do that. So like that doesn't mean anything off topics. I can use that for my switch, for my computer, for my tablet. So like it doesn't mean much without knowing more. So yeah. Can it connect to me though? Is the question. Uh, can if, the if controller I try hard to, enough? Can I build a connection with you? Can, have I, have, can I have a can I have a con, I, some kind of a connection with this controller? Do you have Bluetooth so, or spiritual so think, or intimate or or like anything? I, really. I think listen, I think we've got one more serious topic, and I think that serious topic is our favorite fast food burgers. Are we ready to move in that direction? Or do we have any <laughs> I thought we had wait, Anthem? Does it, well yeah, but, does anybody want to talk about Anthem? You know, uh, that, anybody play well, Anthem? we can touch on it. It just came the, from an indie developer last month, so I'm not sure if anybody played just, it. Just just the fact that it's in a lot of fucking trouble. Um yeah. that that I had, I was actually so I was reading uh, an article on Forbes, uh, and uh, I, I I pulled it up here, um, and the article makes a good point. It said the title of the article is "The Division Two is Good," and that's bad news for Anthem, and and I fucking agree. Like I I have never, you know, I I sat here and I thought to myself, what was the what's the more del- what 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 game has had the more del- disastrous launch right like Fallout seventy six, or Anthem. And honestly, At least guys, people I, talked about Fallout. I mean, <laughs> I got to give it to Anthem, man. Like, I mean, how? I how in the world can you give it to Anthem? Anthem Fall had a significantly worse. Like, <laughs> but, was no, no, but but I think I don't think people were as, were expecting as much out of mm-hmm. Fallout seventy six as they were as, as they were out of Anthem. Were we expecting um, much out of Anthem? I were I we? was like, I mean, I really was. I mean, Bioware, like you know, you know, feelings about Mass Effect and drama aside. Bioware has a solid fucking pedigree. Like they're they're a good developer. They make good games. You know, this is the last couple of games they've made. Sure, like the Old well, Republic I, was a disaster. Um, you know, I Mass Effect Andromeda one. was really bad. Um, I don't know about Dragon Age Inquisition. I, I don't know anything about that. Dragon Literally, Age Inquisition was nothing. Really fucking good. It was pretty decent. Okay, yeah. it, was, it was it was really good. Yeah. But I, you know, the Division Two being as good as it is, um. You know, you've got more content coming out for Destiny 2. Uh, you've got Borderlands 3, which is going to be announced uh, uh, at, at PAX. Um, I think I think Anthem's in a spot of fucking trouble. And and a, a year from now, I'm not sure. Like, I expect by the end of the year, if things don't pick up, then we're going to hear about 
support for Anthem just being quietly dropped. Um, See, I don't, I, I don't think it spells the end of Bioware and or anything you know Doomsday related like that. But I just don't think I think that I think that I I don't know. I think this was a huge misstep, and I I, I cannot think of a worse launch for a game than than Anthem well, this generation. But I mean, Bioware just released a statement today, um, talking about that they are in in the in for the long haul yeah uh, sure Spartan but of course they're, of course they're going to say that i mean they want people to stick around i mean if, if they were well, I, mean, I mean but but the fact that justin the fact that they had to say that the fact that they had to specify yeah. that tells me really everything i need to know about one the problems in the game but two what the status of the player base is begging the question uh, a bit well no i mean i think that's just because everybody's like oh ea is gonna shut you guys down like i i don't know like I won't argue that Anthem has had a poor launch and a poor reception. I've just seen so many of these games turn around and become huge that but I Justin, don't... But Justin, how many from EA? It's pretty much all Ubisoft, right? Good point. Good yeah, point. Yeah, so, so like, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be a dick. But, but what I will say and it's is hard. The one, the one, <laughs> the one third, the one third party company that is Raising. a major AAA publisher that we have seen that has been very good at this this generation is Ubisoft. And Ubisoft has Division 2. So if Division 2 is already launching in a good state and it's following the Ubisoft trend of our sequels are very good, then I, I worry about Anthem. And, and I totally think that Bioware is sincere when they tell players on Reddit through that statement that we are here for the long haul. But I think that EA operates in a way, and Jason Schreier actually tweeted this um, today, but it, EA doesn't say, you need to go out and make this game, but EA says, where is your equivalent of X moneymaker that, that is, you know, yeah. it's, sports mm -hmm. game and so i think that by q4 this year if anthem's numbers are dwindling and it's not making a lot of money through microtransactions or or paid content then we will look at them saying okay let's let's sunset our focus here and turn that into dragon age 4 or yep. spread out the developers into a different team and quietly shut her bioware which i think is not very likely um i that would be such a fucking tragedy. I, I listen, I mean, I like a lot of EA games. I think EA gets a lot of more crap than it deserves. Um, but I think that when a better game comes out three weeks later, uh, it's really hard to recover. So here's the thing. I, and so I'm not I, I'm not a huge fan of Jim Sterling's like content that he puts out. Uh, cause I don't really like his pundit style on it just on a personal level. Um, but the thing is, and a point that he regularly, regularly, regularly has been making for a really long time, and he's 100% correct, is there's really only so much room on the market for these massive games as a service kind of titles. Yep. Um, and, and there's a saturation point, and all these developers and all these publishers are going to rush to get their destiny. You know, ever since Destiny really lit up and really kind of changed the way we look at these online games and really started viewing games as as a service, because I think Destiny was maybe the most mainstream, like, real breaking point for that for a lot of people. Um, but you can't have 15 Destinies on the market. Uh, you're going to find a couple that will break through. And I mean, I don't mean a couple as in literally just two or three, but you're going to find some. They're going to do well. And pretty much everything else is going to flop hard because there's a limited amount of time and attention share we can give things. Um, and and increasingly what we've seen is that when a game like that, one of, the, one of those big service type online games does well, it does really well. And when it doesn't do well, it really flops hard. And, and like has been brought up, Ubisoft's pretty much the only one who's figured out how to take something that, that really flops hard and stick with it and, and pump it back up into something that becomes a pretty solid success. Um, they're the exception to that rule. Um, yeah. You know, when, when one of the first things they told me at, uh, when I was at Nintendo was that their biggest competition was not Sony or Microsoft, it was Netflix. Uh, because it doesn't matter, when you're in the entertainment industry, you're trying to get people's minutes of time. Um, and that is especially true when you're talking about these big online service games. There's just only so many minutes in a day, man. Yeah. So I think Anthem's Wait, biggest you... challenge is going to be um, people moving on. Because I played yeah. those types of games to play with my friends. And as long as when they're gone, I, I have no reason to come back. So if they say we're in for the long haul, and if you fix it six months online, people are already spread out. We're going to see Division 2. Uh, we're going to get Destiny 3 at some point. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, man. Uh, but, uh, you know... 
if they lose a little bit of money on Anthem, it's going to force the hand. They're going to have to do a remake for Mass Effect Trilogy on next-gen system. That means I can play Mass Effect 3 <laughs> multiplayer <laughs> again, which is Put one of the best Switch. games ever. Exactly. Put it on Switch. Switch. Um, you know, you never know. It's, there's always silver lining, but it's it's too bad for for a team that probably still work pretty hard on on a on a game that big and get this kind of a reception. Um, but you can't like like a lot of these games have bad launches, but this was something else. Like this yeah. was this yeah. was epically bad. It's crazy. Like, this well, was, yeah. and, it, and it's still fucking happening. Like literally last week, we found yeah. out the bug the first gun you get in the game is more powerful than the legendary here if you take off some equipment and it's a bug it's not designed but i'm saying like i and i feel i have sympathy right because it it feels like bioware somebody mentioned this in our chat they're absolutely right it feels like bioware saw what the division one and what destiny one were doing and they were like hell yeah this looks cool let's buckle down and make it and then they never had the free time in their evenings to sit down and see what worked and what didn't in those games And, and now they are reliving the vanilla experience that we all played in 2014 yeah but with Destiny, like, they launched. Like, everybody knew it was coming. Everybody yeah. was hyped. With Anthem, it's been, like, a, a fizzler completely through the up to launch. Like, it started vague, and then even the last E3 was behind closed yeah. doors. There was never, like, the palpable hype that we had for Destiny. Even though Destiny 1 had, had a share amount of problems, even Destiny 2, everybody was on board. So they already got that buy-in. Everybody wants to get their $60 back. And I think... Not enough people put their sixty dollars in with Anthem to to keep them around. Like it, it's a really bad spot they're in. Yep. Yeah. I, I agree. Well, 100%. I mean, it was. We do have the digital charts for uh, PSN for February, and it was mm-hmm. the most downloaded game on PSN in February. The sure. most yeah. downloaded yeah, but, paid but, game. But but these games, Justin, though, like like it's not so much how they sell at the gate. It's it's their legs down the road and that well, player. No, exactly. Game, but you know? like. I mean, I've heard people talking about it like it didn't sell. It seems like it sold. It just I don't know if people are going to stick around. Yeah, and like what was yeah. what was what was uh, EA's number they wanted? They wanted oh, they wanted like six million by the end of by March. the end I by the end of March. Happened. They ain't and gonna are, get it. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. They ain't but, gonna um, get it. Repeat that I don't number. Know. Six million. Six, six million. million. Six, million. six followed by that many zeros. Yeah, mm-hmm. that ain't yeah. that ain't. I'm sorry, guys, but that ain't that ain't in the cards. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Whoa, I don't know what whoa. I just heard. But Easy. Relax, is okay? Derek. Calm the, the, the fuck headphones out. falling. Derek, it's fine. Wow. Relax. Wow. You know what we know. need to do? You know what we need to do? We need to move on to talking about big burgers. And big then we're, burgers. And then we're gonna. And then I'm gonna drop a, a really cool announcement on on, uh, on everybody. But first, uh, Zach, do you want to lead us into the promised land of of a fast food discussion? I feel sure. like and I want the fucking chat. By the way, real sure. quick, I want so, the chat to get fucking involved in this. Like, so let, let me let me lay get down. Mad. Get mad. Let me lay down. Let me lay down some ground rules. So first and foremost, we are talking strictly burgers right here. We are not talking about fries. We're not talking about shakes. This is strictly the burger experience. Oh, hold on. I thought now, we were talking about fries too. No, they fries might are separate. separate. Just They're because separate. you want to talk separate about steak category. fries, John, get the fuck out of here. Man, fuck wow. you, dude. <laughs> now, hear me out. So here's what I would like to see. I would like us each to, from the top, say what our favorites are. If people have the same, I want to see them teaming up. And I want us to be King of the Hill style. We will be picking our favorites. There will only be one king at the very end. Okay? Does that okay. sound? Do those rules make sense, everybody? So sure, fine. sure, sure. Fine. Okay, are we so doing I'm international right. or okay, US? I'm, good, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Now, now the thing is, if possible, did somebody? Did, wow, did you just ask if it could be international? Is that what well, I heard? Look, like I uh, here in Canada, we don't have everything you have. Like we don't have Whataburger. We that's don't have a, that's uh, true. Yeah, I live in Kentucky. I don't exactly have like Whataburger or a Smashburger or like. I don't um, have that either. I don't. I don't have. I'm not gonna. Fuck, about... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pick Whataburger anyway because it's no, fucking overrated no, 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 shit. No, no, no. So, so so let why don't you know we'll, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. I don't think it'll be a problem. Wow, why, why don't we start with you? You're you're our cherished God, guest. Terrible. Okay, you're our cherished so, guest. It's 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 hard to just pick a chain because every chain has super good burgers like mm. separated out, right? Do they though? Like, the, dude, there is the double quarter pounder from McDonald's trash. is fucking amazing. Trash. It's amazing, but trash compare. Fire. But overall, I'm not sure if we can compare the the, the entire menu. One of my favorites actually is Dairy Queen hamburgers, uh, especially the flamethrower burger is fantastic. It's fresh. <laughs> it's double. Sorry, meat. what's that name? The flamethrower. It's, okay. it's like a, it's a double burger. It's, <laughs> sure. it's, it's, it's got spicy sauce on it. It has bacon. It is a pretty good burger. And I think it's complemented by the fact that you can also order a Blizzard at the same place. So yeah. you don't have to go to two different places. And that is, for me, what puts Dairy Queen Burgers number one. 
uh, are you bringing the shake experience into our burger? No, it's analysis? just. I'm not saying the shakes. It's just, just bonus. He's talking like, about okay. company okay. experience. It's, it's yeah. a, it's a Can we talk about accompaniments to the burger in general? Right, like not who has the best shake or best fries, but like who is giving you the best things you can get with the burger? Can we account for that or no? You you cut out a little bit. Are you talking yeah. about like are you talking about like condiments? No, and like, you know, like sides, accompaniments. Like, so if, if I get a burger at, for example, that's Dairy Queen, comment. no, accompaniment, like fries, like shakes, not necessarily who has the best fries and the best shakes, but like who has the best other mm. things I could get to go no. along with my burger. No, 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 this is like, because like, then you like, start going down the road of, well, you know what? McDonald's has the best snack wraps and I really right. like a fucking good snack right. wrap with my burger. You okay, make so, a point. So, so wow, you, you have Even picked on this restaurant. Bowl. You have picked something that I'm sure none of us have even eaten, but I, re I you respect it. You've never been to it. Dairy Queen? Are you? Are you, are you oh, I, I've I've been yeah, to Dairy Queen. I've not course. had their. I have not come for their their warm foods. Um, Dude, you but, should. They're no, they're yeah. surprisingly good. I listen. I'll take your word for it, and you maybe should. I'll try one. Maybe yeah. I, yeah. Now we listen. We gotta keep going. Justin, what's your favorite <laughs> fast food? So so question question. Does Five Guys count as fast food? Yes, it does. That's fucking does. bullshit to, th to say that it doesn't. Yes, it does. You get that okay. shit fast, it counts. Yeah. Okay. Th then I gotta go with Five Guys. It's a it's solid fucking choice. Re real good. Okay. Real good. Um. Real good. Coincidentally, patties. Five Guys. Hey, look at this. I, right. Guys. I know. Yeah. Like. I, yeah. We're. I was gonna make a joke there, but I'm not going to. Re Justin, please continue. Real good patties. Good buns. Uh, and very customizable. Um with good choices for you know different ingredients you can it's, get yeah it no it's no like, justin you're right it's like the character creator of burgers it's really, yeah like it, like you can go there a bunch of times and get a whole lot of different types of burgers and they'll all be really good um so yeah that has to be my choice and it's okay far and away out in front mm. okay derek mm. you know my, what, man why am i last um because I'm not I have gonna... Okay, well, you no, said my name, ahead. No, so... Derek, go ahead, Derek. <laughs> Who's going? It's Derek. Derek. Derek's okay. going. So, I mean, I got to go with Dairy Queen. Like, Dairy Queen burgers are... So here's the thing. One of the things that you have to deal with when you go to burgers at a burger place is inconsistency, right? Uh, I was going to bring it if up. If you exactly. go to, like, a McDonald's or a Burger King or a lot of places, like, a, a, uh, your, your entry level, your cheap burgers are trash... And you get a good burger when you go up to the top. And the thing is, at Dairy Queen, all their burgers are good. None of their patties are, like, greasy or sad. I've never had, like, lettuce that was, like, limp and, and gross and over soggy. I've never had a sad tomato. Like, it's always just a good, consistent fucking burger. And, like, I think a big part of it, too, is I really don't like my burgers to be over greasy. And Dairy Queen burgers are never, like, they, they never have come across as very greasy to me so like i love like steak and shake but it doesn't matter because it's just drowning in grease and i'm trying to watch out i, I want my ticker to last for a while and i already you eat gotta shitty sacrifice enough. your body for flavor derek i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but i don't like grease so I, I think i'm going with i'm going with dairy queen is where i'm going wow yeah, john man. show up strong I've got to uh, I've got to fucking put a stop to this nonsense and uh, you know inform all of you and the chat that the the absolute best fucking burger there is out there is the one you get basically any burger you get from Checkers or Rallies if you're living uh, you know if you're living in uh, you know motherfucker North. you're just trying fucking to get every sponsored. sandwich no, 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 you get no, no, no. from Rallies yeah, sound, yeah. tastes okay, exactly okay. the same everybody no, no. Every, yeah. everybody it's my turn this. Justin no, no. It's my <laughs> turn the Justin they Shut need the fuck Justin they, they, Justin. I'm giving them added context about why this is a bullshit choice <laughs> but no no, no. Just, okay checkers justin, checkers justin, justin no checkers justin, pitch justin <laughs> then you can tell me how much how, how 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 big a bullshitter i am okay how but often no. checkers interacts with you on twitter but no but are they here in the fucking podcast they could fucking be. how often they send you final fantasy so listen. here's the deal so, like so, 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 here's so the deal. i'm gonna talk about my burgers damn it and checkers <laughs> is the best fucking burger there is all right and you know why because checkers 
has the best fucking fries. And you take those fries and you put them in the fucking I burger. We said it is like just said we were not it is like, that, John. It is like two food groups making love in your mouth. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. not I sanitary. No, I John is chasing there, okay? like sponsorship money hard. Look, my local no, rally's got shut checkers. down by the health department. So it, it, it sounds like it sounds like John is not counting on the Patreon taking off after that fucking checkers money. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I wasn't taking. I wasn't counting on it taking off anyway. But but checkers is the absolute best fucking burger. Especially you know what fuck you know Justin. Go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Throw your fucking nonsense out there about what a so, what a so, fucking scam so, artist yeah. I am. So yeah, um, John tweets about Final Fantasy VI, and Checkers comes out of fucking nowhere with pixel art and because they because and, because not only are their burgers jumping. delicious, but they have good fucking taste. They have yeah, good sure. burgers and jumping and good in games. Like, Checker Checkers knew must have known this was coming. Mute bought him off Mute his I, mic. plus Mute he's his also mic. talking about Who, the fry experience Mute his mic. Was this today Mute was his it mic. john or was it was it <laughs> no it was zach yeah. it was okay. definitely yeah. fucking zach yeah. Yeah. Mute, mute yeah. justin's mic for the rest of the podcast zach, okay zach, so so here's here's what's going on <laughs> five guys <laughs> is king <laughs> shit five guys is king shit of fuck mountain all right <laughs> so what wow. i'm saying so so here's 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 how it here's how i see it the way i see it is derek in Wout are on Dairy Queen. Justin and I are on Five Guys. It sounds like John has uh, inherently been eliminated. Uh, does anybody disagree with that besides John? Yeah. Uh, no, you can. Uh, you can. It all is a two-two-one scenario. No, absolutely fucking not. I am not eliminated. No, Justin well, is eliminated. So, no, no. I agree so, so, so it, it looks like we need to have a candid conversation about the burger quality between Dairy Queen and Five Guys, and I, I think what I find difficult about this conversation is that Derek and Wow are the only people who have had burgers from Dairy Queen, am I right? Probably, otherwise you would I've not never been to a Dairy Queen. Still. I've never seen it. Never Dairy been Queen. to a Dairy Queen? I've never seen one. Wow. Wow. I don't know. Are they not that widespread or what? Um, they're everywhere. They're, one of them used to exist when I was a kid and the next town over went out of business. Hmm, so. That's weird. Don't have like the best opinion? I have like five in Louisville. I mean, they're okay. So, yeah. so talk to me. Talk to me about the components. Um, and and really, what brings a strength to to now? Are, are we just Dairy Queen in general, or are we talk flamethrower burger? Well, no, just the, all, well, burgers all of them. Good. Are, okay, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Again, because it's, it's not like it's not like Checkers and Rallies where they're like their cheap rally burgers are basically just like a, a an unwrapped microwavable burger dipped yeah, in grease. That's, that's cool. But then Derek. their that's high end burgers good. are pretty good. That's the real good. Burgers Derek. are pretty good. The cheap that's ones are not. That's real fucking good, Derek. Yeah, no, please continue. <laughs> you know, that's great. <laughs> that's fucking great, Derek. Here, here's why Derek is going to come out on top. Because yeah. five guys, I go to your five guys, and I go to your five guys. The experience is not going to be the same because they're just dudes flipping burgers and and putting them together wow. you cannot have a um a consistent experience with five guys because they're made on the spot you that's a beauty of change like I they have some machine don't know that i agree with this, this yeah no, 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 no i'm gonna get there i i buy a flamethrower burger here in canada or in southern california and it's gonna be exactly the same burger you cannot tell me that that's happening with five guys when you order it at the same place that you're gonna have the exact same experience consistency is key when it comes to big burgers see i don't know yeah. about this because I, here's what i'll say no, is i've had five guys and i've never had a five guys burger other than the fact that you could throw like whatever the fuck you wanted on it um like i'm pretty sure if i was like put that man's hand on my burger then they would just cut that employee's hand off and put it on my burger you should and do I am that. impressed by that commitment but what, i've Mike's never had a five guys burger that that was as good to me as a dairy queen burger um but again a lot of that is that five guys burgers are greasy as fuck i mean that okay. shit if you, you open the wrapper up and it drips in your lap and that's not a good sign to so, me like quick, i don't like quick, greasy food address, guys guys we need to address this in chat okay yosemite blam says if you order a burger and they ask how you want it done that isn't fast food not true because at burger king you can have it your way okay they specifically yeah, tell that's you true they, they specifically they can, tell you, you explicitly have it your way you could absolutely have it your way at burger king okay? yeah you can put whatever no, the fuck you want on those burgers so that's listen, not true so i will i will say this I fast say food versus part... sit down right if i go into my local like pub or bar that's not fast food even though it's probably relatively right. cheap and it doesn't take long like it's a sit down place versus a fast I think, food i think if you can chain. be out if if on a good day you can be in and out the door within 10 minutes that is categorically a fast food i agree 
Now, I, I will yeah. say this. So I will say I, I hear well, but I also would say I have been to three or four different, uh, multiple times I've been there, but three or four different uh, uh, Five Guys, and it's always pretty much the same in terms of like my, my burger with jalapenos, grilled onions, and American cheese is usually pretty fucking consistent. You gotta be putting some fucking mushrooms on that thing. I don't. Oh. Now, uh, <laughs> so... Listen, Justin, do you have any, before we ask John where he falls on this, Justin, do you have anything you'd like to add to the Five Guys um, defense? I, I don't know, because I've never been to a Dairy Queen. So he's uh, at least open-minded. Uh, yeah, and that's why where we come in on top, because I have had Five Guys. I have yeah. had Dairy Queen. So my experience is by The two people who had both yours. believe Dairy Queen is better, and hey, the two people yo, who yeah, believe I've that... No, that, I've had both. Yeah, Ooh, yeah you're out. Oh, you're way in yet? Be our tiebreaker. Yeah, Ooh, that's John? fucking right. John, now I could be in. fucking, I could be fucking petty and go with Dairy Queen, because <laughs> because of Justin and his <laughs> fucking accurate. nonsense bullshit over here. Okay, or I could go with Five Guys because I genuinely like Five Guys better. Hmm, what to John, do? What should I do? So John, so here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Just what, remember who disqualified you. Okay. okay. No, no, no. It's here's too here's soon what I'm for me do. to mute John's unlike, mic again as a gag. Unlike, unlike other members of this podcast, I, I am, am a mature, responsible, measured adult. I'm a sensible man. Okay. I, I always, I always speak truth to power. Okay. I, 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 I want the fucking truth in, in every situation. Okay. Not just online, but when we're talking about borders as well. And I gotta go. I'm fucking spitting the words out because of Justin over here, but I got to go with five guys on this one. Right. I just, I feel like five guys I've had Dairy Queen burgers. They're great. Five guys, however, throwing those fucking grilled onions and mushrooms and pickles and some fucking, you know, some jalapenos on there, a little Swiss cheese. Like I can't, I, I can't, I, my, my heart rests with five guys in this scenario. You just so. got your number in chat though. Wow. Yeah. And here's the thing, the you can out. go into Five Guys and order a terrible burger. Okay, you know what, Lena? True. It's a double standard because yeah. it's twice as true, okay? So, what, wait, <laughs> what, will, you un, what, will you unpack that? Will you, what do you mean you can order a terrible Well, look, I cannot go into Dairy Queens. I cannot have the shit burger, please, because I know Sorcerer, we only serve good burgers. Apparently, according to you guys, you can create a monstrosity of a burger that is just objectively bad. <laughs> that is an offense and, to now, God and anime. Now let me now let me point something out. I think this is a philosophical difference between Americans and non-Americans in that if I want the most fucked up heinous thing in the world, I have the power to do that. Yeah, you Don't you believe in liberty, brother? <laughs> and, frankly, <laughs> and frankly, you not seeing that as a positive is alarming to me. <laughs> I just want an eagle to fly into Zach's. All of a sudden, on his shoulder. Do you eagle burgers? Even order the eagle same burgers burger are real good. Guys. <laughs> what was that? Can you tell me what is the best burger at Five Guys? You can't, because you have to make it your fucking self. Whoa! Yes. No, I, I, no. I just, I have a consistent thing. I get the the, the, you, the, cheese the meat is burger. better. The beef is better. The meat, the meat is phenomenal. They they have very good ingredients. And you know what else I like? I like that you can get some peanuts while you wait a couple minutes for your food. I like that. Yeah, no, I like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's, it's not nice. a blizzard. You can put peanuts in your blizzard and no, you get a that's whole fucking ice I can look right at here. a fucking shake. I can get a shake that's if true. I want one. It's not a blizzard, yeah. though. It's not a no. blizzard, It's not though. a blizzard. Like, I, I, yeah. look, look, dude, I'm not going to. All right, look. Nothing again. Like, I fucks with a blizzard, okay? I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to bullshit about that. A blizzard <laughs> with M&Ms. <laughs> a blizzard with M&Ms. Yeah. I'm it's like a baby blizzard. blizzard, man. Um, There's so much basket. Chicken finger fries. basket. Fucking pocket. Can we talk about fries blizzard. now? Can we talk yeah, about fries yeah. now? So, okay. so five guys, five guys is king. Or, or we could go in a wholesome direction and we could, everybody could bring up their favorite local burger place that people from oh. not around you wouldn't have been to. So we can shout out the good little places. Because or, we all know or this is real burger action. Each other about fries. I, I like Bounce Derek's out. idea. <laughs> Fuck yeah. you, Justin. What is with you tonight? You're yeah. supposed to be No, no, no. I, I just really want to plug a really good burger place yeah. around me. Yeah, we'll, that's we'll, all, have that's time. All. we'll have time to bitch each other. Okay, let's do fries first, and then we can do our local burger places. <sighs> all right, but I want this to be a sprint. We're going to go quick round table. We're quick, not even going to Quick argue. on the fries. Quick on the fries. Real quick, Zach. One question about the rules. Yep. Do Sonic Tots count? No. It's a, it's no, a fried tots potato. Aren't no, that is explicitly a tot. No. It's, 
All right. So are sk- so is a skillet hash, and that doesn't count. So all right, point taken. All right, but we're going quick. We're not talking pros and cons. We are quickly doing round Let's table. Go fast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, A and W fries, best fries. Okay, Justin, I'm gonna go with McDonald's. I'm gonna go with Wendy's. Derek. Um, steak and shake, but specifically the, the Parmesan and garlic seasoned fries. The, the, the standard fries are garbage, but you get that Parmesan and garlic on there. Mm. So good. Okay. John. Y'all, the fucking obvious answer is Arby's curlies. Yeah, actually, oh, I do feel yeah. like a dumbass. Actually, you know, yeah. Going with that. Yeah, yeah. John. John, I. Yeah. Come on. I haven't like, been to an Arby's in like four years, so. Arby's I don't know where there's an Arby's around. I always forget Arby's they exist. Arby's Curly's, and y'all fucking know I'm speaking I, nothing but the I felt like on. Arby's went out of business and just became a social media company for a brand that didn't exist anymore. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So we are seeing, we are seeing Justin and John on the same side of Arby's. Did I hear somebody else jump Derek, in? Derek, Derek I did, well. I did. I'll tell you, oh. I've never had them, but I like, I love turdy fries, so I'm sure they're good. They're really Plus, good. Season curly fries. fries. Yeah. They're real good. All right, and fine. The, fine. The, Arby's Arby's is clearly one. See, and, and here and here's the thing, Zach. Arby's curly fries are coiled and ready to strike your taste buds with flavor. Okay? Fucking shit. <laughs> like, like a McDonald's snake. fries? You like McDonald's fries, okay? Those you know a fry is bad when it <laughs> uses salt and seasoning as a crutch, not as a compliment. I listen, That's I just like the Wendy's truth. I think Wendy's fries Wendy's good are fries. all right. They're Wendy's solid. Is good fries. I think Wendy you, you know They don't take I, the skin off, and that means a lot yeah. to me. Yeah, when I was a younger man, people talk some mad shit when one of these was like, "Hey, we're changing. we're gonna keep those skins on there." But I when like you it. were a, when you were a younger man, you're like fucking twenty three years old. Like you are yeah, a younger man. I was a teen. What the hell it's are you true. even talking about? It's true. I was a teen. All right, are we gonna um, shout? All right, let's shout out our our, our burger places. So yeah, we can fucking, please. Uh, so please I can so I can drop this fucking hotness. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, talk to us about okay. your favorite local joint. So there, there was a joint called The Works here in Canada. They now expanded to a chain, which has unfortunately lowered the quality overall a little bit because it was like a mom and pop shop that I really love. You can't get any burger you like there. You can put a fried egg if you want on it, you want with peanut butter and whatever you want. It is a built your own, but they have like a hundred options where they put all the condiments on. It's fantastic. It's great. You can get elk. You can get uh, mushroom buns. It's like they have so many options. Great little burger place. French is out now throughout Canada. It's uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver. Great little place. Definitely recommend it just for the menu creativity there. Okay. That sounds awesome. Justin, what about you, buddy? Um, so there's a Rochester area chain uh, called Tom Walls that is extraordinarily good. Um, they have a Big Bopper burger, which is... Great um, name. I'm in. Holy shit. Yes. Good fucking yes. great um, name. I, I forgot to mention, the entire place is styled to look like a 50s restaurant Hell yes. um playing music from the 50s uh All they right. have whole ice cream bar and great shakes and everything too um but the burgers are really great um they 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 uh argue that their their meat meat patties are not patties they are ground rounds um uh because they smash wholesome. it on this place is too um, fucking wholesome on site it it's it's very good um i love that place nice derek what about, about you yeah derek so we've got a place i'm pretty sure it's a one-off i've never heard of it anywhere outside of louisville but it's a it's a one-off little place called game here in louisville um and they have like you know make your burger like a bajillion different ways but um you can get so many different weird kinds of meat um you can get you can get sure you can get like venison and you can get like nice beef you can get elk or caribou or alligator or kangaroo um i had a kangaroo burger the last time i was there i'd never had kangaroo before and um turns out i like eating those fuckers so um uh one time i was there uh with a buddy um and i got you get like the bones and they like roast the marrow and it's so good and then they recommended that i get a bourbon shot or they recommend my buddy got a bourbon shot lena knows it was a uh, the buddy but he got a bourbon shot down the the shoot of the cleaned out bone with the marrow what? juice yeah what and that it, sounds it, horrific he said it was the greatest thing he'd ever done and if i had the courage no, i would have no. joined him no um, no 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 sir no yeah yes so, yeah, sounds like the fucking South, Derek. Yeah. Like, I, I, <laughs> Welcome I, I, to Kentucky. I, I, Am I the only Southerner in SDGC? Everyone yeah, else is either yeah. like 
more north or they're like west coast or like rebs in kansas i only so, cut my bourbon with the finest flesh of animals they like, make okay. bourbon here motherfucker. Only the finest <laughs> bodily fluids in my bourbon oh that sounds fucking terrible john john walk around john, bare feet he went john, there can he you please there. give us something that's not going to be smashing open bones yeah. and drinking the marrow absolutely yeah. i'll be so the be- best john. best com. the best big burger in the area comes out of my fucking kitchen Oh, there oh it is. fuck off! What goes into my board? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Let me quarterback this thing. I use I use three parts ground beef, uh, and pork. I just I mat or two parts. Sorry, I match that shit all together. Throw some egg in there, some breadcrumbs, a little shredded cheese, some red oh, wine, some good. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. Pound that shit down into a patty, right? Maybe a little cilantro in there if I'm feeling fucking frisky, right? Throw that it's shit on the stove. Choice. Five five minutes, five minutes on each side for that. Pr- and I only use I only use. 80% beef, 20% fat. Okay, because you got to get that fucking flavor. Anything more than that, any, any leaner than that, you're not, you're missing out on that fucking flavor. I take that motherfucker, cook medium, off the motherfucking skillet. I put it on a toasted sesame bun. A sesame bun, you motherfuckers. It's required. He's very Tom Walls right has sesame and then buns I, on the. On I, 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 I top that shit bun. with some, some Swiss cheese. Some grilled mushrooms, some grilled onions, a little lettuce, pickled tomatoes. And the pickles I used are brined in IPA. Okay, that does sound pretty good. All right, fine. I I think John liked those burgers before we even heard of them. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. so all all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, there's a rumor going around. We might be doing a little E3 action at, at, at my place on SDGC. Y'all gonna well, be fucking there's, 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 there's I, probably a lot less chance that my credentials to your house will get revoked. <laughs> so. can, I, can I talk a little bit? Can I talk a little bit about my my favorite place? You may, yeah. Please. So, so my favorite place is a is a uh, place I found in college called Meat Barbecue. Uh, it, it is already. in it is in uh, you know, so so it, it is not quite Detroit, but Lansing, Michigan, uh, like a lot of Michigan, is a is kind of a a, a down and out place. But Meat Barbecue uh, is this really nice. Um, it is biker bar aesthetic, but the people inside are not biker bar. It is a really wholesome, warm place. So like grandmas uh, in there, like no, no, but like they have, they have this really interesting <laughs> aesthetic where they're like, hey, we're gonna have a Megadeth al- album on the wall, but we're also gonna have Star Wars memorabilia on the wall too um it's a weird place but they have this really great burger that i love called the hot mess and you can get it any way you want they will they will make this for you with beef brisket pulled pork smoked turkey or a house blended burger patty and i always go for the house blended burger patty i mean come on but the hot mess includes blue cheese dressing blue cheese crumbles jalapenos and hot sauce now god damn there's something about the way the crumbles and the dressing really mix and they create this really soft texture with the burger and you're like it's not greasy, right? Um, I think we talked a little bit tonight about how grease can really fuck with a burger. And honestly, you just end up tasting the grease. But there's something about the way blue cheese, jalapenos, and hot sauce really mix to make this really sweet, easy to cut through burger. Uh, it's incredible. And they also serve Parmesan and garlic fries on the side. And they melt yes. the cheese on top of it nacho style. It It is an incredible, incredible place. Sounds like um, heaven. Yeah, we had to move away for when I when I got my job and, and pilgrimage back north uh, to Lansing to kind of to kind of get back and, and, and kind of reconnect with myself. Um, but no meat meat barbecue. If you're Sounds like a yourself, really spiritual journey, Zach. It it is religious. We li- listen. So so my fiance and I are looking for places to get married. We looked into this venue because it's so special to us. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, dude, if you have it's a awesome. big burger wedding, I will attend. Like I might. Yeah. Even, might even it pull turns through. out this biker bar wanted fifteen thousand dollars, and we said no. It's worth it. <laughs> I don't know, man. The big burgers might be worth but, it. But but no meat meat barbecue. You're, you 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 can do no wrong. <laughs> It's incredible. All right. Well, we are uh, we are bumping up against our time here. Yeah. So uh, give you guys a pretty cool announcement here. Uh, so uh, as everybody knows, uh, PAX East is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, and we're going to have a huge presence there. We're very very excited about it, and um, we want to we wanted to follow that up strong uh, with something really cool for you guys. So I'm not going to announce it on Twitter yet until it gets closer, just because I want to like kind of give it about a, a week before I, I say it on Twitter. But on April 11th, you guys are going to want to tune in here because Greg Miller from Kind of Funny is going to join SDGC uh live at 9 p.m eastern standard time we are very very excited uh to welcome him uh onto the podcast it kind of uh we we i started 
uh, I started SDGC because of, of Greg, and uh, he's somebody that I have admired for a very long time. And, um, and, and so, and of course, you know, uh, I co I co-hosted with him. I co-hosted kind of funny games daily with him in November and Rebecca is going to be co-hosting with him, uh, next week on Tuesday, uh, the Wednesday, 20th. I believe is it Wednesday is Wednesday, the 20th is it Wednesday. Yeah. I know it's the 20th. Um, yeah. Cause it's my birthday. So, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh. Uh, um, okay. Excellent. You've got a birthday coming up next week as well, but uh we are gonna yep so uh and again like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like throw it out toss it out there on twitter yet just because i wanted to <laughs> i, I want to give that to zach in the fucking chat but <laughs> but uh that was that was good but um yeah so i'll probably uh i'll probably announce it on twitter um uh, the week before uh, so don't be stealing my thunder or anything uh but i just want to let you guys know here in chat that uh greg will be here uh on the 11th of uh april april uh, april very excited uh so the not the week after pax but the week after that and uh if you guys have any questions for any of uh for for him or for any of us we would love it if you submitted to us so you can email those questions to superperform gamescast at gmail.com uh we would really or you can just hit us up on twitter uh at yeah twitter. i was gonna say yeah it, it, you can you can tweet them directly at us also we have uh we I think we have open DMs, or you can request to DM that account, and I run it. So uh, we'll see it. We'll see it. Yeah. Can't wait what he has to say about your burger bullshit here. We're gonna have yeah. to bring up a food yeah. So, so like you know, he's doing he's doing cooking with Greggy again. Right. Like we're gonna have to fucking we're gonna have I mean, to bring up a, a food topic with him. I think like, we're obviously gonna talk about what makes good hot wings, and also the divide between are boneless wings just chicken tenders, or are they... right. um, you know, well, you know, topics like that. More reasons why you turn into this uh, this gaming podcast, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so we're expecting a big turnout. Uh, we're expecting a big turnout for that episode, and uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, de definitely, uh, definitely um, the biggest guest we've ever had on the podcast. Uh, and of course, Wout is not a guest. Wout is a friend, so he does right. not count as a guest. Yes. Otherwise, it would be Wout. Well, well he biggest. only has like twenty thousand more followers. Who times would be... more followers than I do. But I was gonna say he's got like over a million followers. Yeah, got, like, one point three or something 1. like that. Three million followers yeah. or something like that. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's anyway, ridiculous. we are we are very excited about it. Uh, uh, does anybody have anything else uh, they want to say before uh, before we tune out here? Next week, um, um, last show before we go to Boston, uh, we should be doing NPD discussion. We are gonna have Matt back, right? Matt's gonna be that. back. Yep. Matt Good back. Friend of the show, friend of the show, NPD analyst Matt Piscatella will be joining us next week for February's uh, sales result discussions uh, before we go to Boston and do all of our coverage. And obviously, no show that week. So. Yeah, and and I also just want to say uh, a couple of things. One. Uh, when we are at PAX, we will try to produce some content. We don't know if it will be live or presenting it to you after the fact. Um, the second thing is, you know, tonight we talked a lot about good food that we've enjoyed eating. I think this weekend, you know, if you can swing it, find something to treat yourself, you know? Just just find a way. It's hard out here, y'all. It's hard okay. out here. I have a box of taquitos. It's, it's called self-care. Instead of okay. spending $12 on a stupid-ass burger, spend it on $1 a month for a year God on the SEGC Patreon. Because that is way more value for your money instead of getting a greasy-ass burger that you're going to regret the next day. So that's how you should spend your $12 this weekend. Thank you, I am the hashtagonist, and Alex. We need you to have... You are my boy! There you go. We need to have, we need to have Wout on more. <laughs> we need to have him on more. Uh... Yeah. Also, obviously, special thanks to, to Wild for coming on. You know, John. John said that you were a friend of the show. You are a guest. True. You know, we still we are still on our best behavior when you're here. You know. <laughs> oh, really? Um, this is the best. Are you behavior. really? Zach, Maybe? Really? You're gonna Maybe. go with that, huh? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Rebecca's gonna fucking kill me for that comment. Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca is. Rebecca is gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but special shouts out to everybody in the group. Um. You know, everybody just just take care of each other. It's. I don't know. I've had a fucking week, and I'm just I'm just in a really soft mood for everyone. Oh. John. Zach. John, take us home before he gets too mushy. But, but let's take it. Let's we get, get all kinds of mushy. Oh, mm. Justin. Before we get going, I just want to um let everybody know if you guys are gonna be at Pax Pax East in Boston, let us know. Hunt um, us down like animals. Yeah, Don't there do are that. going to be six of us there, um, which is we're really excited about. It'll be the of four of us plus Maddie and Finn, uh, yep. who you would know, Maddie Gregoire, and then uh, Nola Nerdcast on Twitter. Um. So, and if you guys are going to be there and you want to say hi, um, feel free. Um, I'm excited to meet people, and it's going to be my first time at any kind of convention, so I'm Same. really looking forward to it. I give hugs.
And yeah. as Rebecca will say, as Rebecca yes. will, as, as Rebecca will say, my fucking hugs are the best. Oh, yeah. we're gonna have a hug off when we all get it's, together. It's gonna be a oh, good it's time. Gonna be, it's, we 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 gonna have a hug off, son. Oh, it's gonna be. Yeah. A hug off. I hate of, this. There's Please gonna be a lot of offline. hugging going on in that hotel room. Please take us off line. Well, out. thank okay, you so yeah, much. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> hey man, I'm, gonna, I'm missing out. The Derek, I'm gonna sad. pull you in for the biggest bear hug you've ever felt. <laughs> and with that, it's always poetry. We don't always agree, but we always keep it real. Have a good one. Lady <laughs> off.